with me today, I have star investor Bill Ackman, CEO of FTSE 100 company, Pershing Square Holdings. Hi, Bill. Thanks for joining me today. Same. Good to, uh, good to see you. Now, we've just entered the final quarter following a, a disappointing Q3. Uh, how do you think stocks are going to play out over the rest of 2021 through I mean, what is typically, historically, a, a, a seasonally strong period for equities? Yeah. So I, I never make short-term stock market predictions because I think it's a really difficult uh, mm-hmm. thing to do. And the probability of getting it wrong, I think, is high. Um, I think all of our businesses are going to report good results. Um, and does that mean the stocks will go up? Um, I can't. I can't speak to the next short period of time. But over time, as businesses report, you know, business the value of a business, the present value of the cash generates over its life. A quarter report of strong earnings and cash flows and growth over a previous period is suggestive of growth in the intrinsic value of the business. And, and we don't think any of our businesses are undervalued. We think the I mean, are overvalued. We think the opposite. We think they're undervalued. So, undervalued companies reporting good results. Stocks should do well, absent some, you know, overarching macro or market uh, development. Again, I, say, I speak over time. And the other thing I would point out is Persian Square Holdings is trading at about one of the widest discounts to net asset value. It's traded at, historically, it's approaching a, you know, it's what, 28, 29% discount to NAB. And I find that just a remarkable, I don't, you know, I don't know, I don't know of other stocks like that. Right, we own some of the highest quality businesses in the world, um, and uh, you can buy them at a, almost a thirty percent discount for the price you see it on the screen by buying it through us. That seems anomalous to me. So, I would think that discount's going to narrow, and and that is something that can happen on a shorter term basis because, you know, so for example, if we find a new investment for the capital that we've raised in this bond offering. And we announce a new investment that's interesting. That should remind people of the opportunity to earn incremental returns on that capital. Um, and uh, I don't know. We've had another, I think, relatively strong year this year after a couple of extraordinary years. And I think Universal itself, uh, while the stock's up nicely, you know, maybe a third from the price we paid uh, just when we closed on the shares a month ago, um, it's trading at about the same multiple as Warner Music, which is a controlled company, a more levered company, a th- number three player in the industry. Uh, Universal's grown a 20, operating income at 21% per annum for the last four years. Warner, about half that. Um, we've got the best management team in the industry. We've got the most market share. So I think the market has yet to give Universal an appropriate premium. Uh, and that's one of our biggest holdings. And I think, again, that just takes time. So um, I think the biggest opportunity for value creation and purchase for holdings is the discount narrowing. It's just too wide here. Well, a couple of um, things that investors are worried about, they're worried about um, valuations, but you've just uh, addressed that regarding your own portfolio. I mean, they're also worried about supply chain issues, which are causing problems globally. Um, now, there's a lot of talk about a, a major correction is, is now due. I know you don't like speculating on short-term movements, but where do you on, on that argument about you know, whether a a correction is around the corner? I mean, whether that be just um, you know taking out a bit of the froth from the market. I mean, do you think they're right? Again, I, I really can't speak to the short term in terms of what the stock market's going to do. Um, you know, what's interesting is, you know, we don't, I, I would have to analyze every you know, the, the meaningful percentage of the companies in the S&P 500 to give you a view on whether it's cheap or expensive. Um, there is a lot of speculative stuff going on. You know, I think fundamentally, Bitcoin is a speculative instrument it's trading, I think, at the all time highs. Um, you see a lot of speculative stuff going on in, in a much broader group of cryptocurrencies. Um, all of that being said, I think there are some real uh, cryptocurrencies that have are associated with what they call projects or business models that can justify fundamental value for a currency. So I think there's really interesting stuff going on in technology with cryptocurrencies with, you know, I do a lot of venture capital personally, and that gives me a peek into what's going on in the world. I think there's a lot of great developments, um, but 
like, and uh, I do think we've had an unprecedented amount of fiscal and uh, you know uh, low rate support. Um, you know, it seems like we're this Delta variant. Uh, the, the statistics are looking a lot more favorable uh, in our country and and uh, certainly in Europe, uh, in the UK, and, and I think uh, you know, more broadly, I just I see a path through the through the uh, through the virus. So, and we're going to have a world where people are really going to want to live again. And uh, so I think you're going to see a big pickup in the service economy, hospitality, travel, um, people spending money. And uh, so I just think that's a pretty strong backdrop, you know, low rates, well-capitalized banks, well-capitalized consumer, um, a desire to live again. You know, we could have a very, very strong economy. I think we probably will. Um, you know, the constraints are constraints, but they're driven by all the demand. And uh, I think people are going to come back to work. People are going to be in offices again. So I'm, I'm generally bullish on the economy. And uh, you know, I'm more bearish on rates. So, so look, you've, you've mentioned a, um, a, a few themes there. Um, I was going to ask, given how 2021 has played out, what's your view on the big themes that investors you know, globally really should be preparing for in 2022? Are there any stocks or sort of sectors, ideas uh, investors should be uh, thinking about and owning? Um, Look, I, I think the world's an uncertain place and we're not traders at all, right? We're looking to own things that we're going to, the stock market closed for a decade. We're happy to own it. That's certainly true for Universal and our other <clears throat> companies in the portfolio, but we own these super durable, robust businesses because I have no idea <laughs> what the world's going to look like in six or 12 months, or I have a pretty good idea, you know, a view of what things are going to be, but they may not be that way. So you want to own businesses that have pricing power if, you know, inflation turns to be a lot more durable than, than temporary. You know, I think inflation expectation uh, has changed fundamentally. That's also a driver of inflation. So I think we're going to see inflation. I think that is going to be a th I think So I think there's going to be a more likelihood of stock market divergence. Some companies doing very, very well. Some companies doing very, very poorly. You know, companies that can't pass through wage inflation and, and goods inflation to their customers are going to do poorly if I'm right about inflation. So the, the better the business, the better it does, I think. And, and you want to own the best businesses in the world, in an uncertain world, in an inflationary world. Um, if you're good or better than we are at trading commodities, you know, there's probably a ton of money to be made. I just don't. It's not what we do. Great. Bill Ackman, um, CEO of Pershing Square Holdings, thank you very much for joining me today. Sure. Thank you, Lee. Appreciate it.